Hello everyone, welcome to my craft table. So it's time for Christmas in July, and I have some brand new stitching dies from Spellbinders to show you in today's video, and we're gonna make up a few cards with these. Let's start off with the stitched Starry Argyle. So this measures five and a half by four and a quarter. When you cut it out, it's going to look like this. It's kind of hard to catch all of the gorgeous detail on camera, but as you can see, it fits an A2 sized card perfectly. I needed to create a pattern for myself. This one's a little more complicated and time consuming. So I'm using some pomegranate red cardstock from Spellbinders. And let me show you the pattern. I circled some of the stitching holes with white and some with black. So the white represents one color that I'm going to use, the green. And the stitching holes circled in black, I'm going to be using some pink embroidery floss on. So let's get started with the stitching. I taped my embroidery floss on the back, and I'm sure there's many ways you could do this, but I'm just going to start going across the top of the panel, making X's. My embroidery floss is really long. I probably should have cut it shorter, but I hate changing out my embroidery floss, so I don't mind you know, kind of pulling it all through. So here's the first part of my X. I'm going to push my needle back up into the next hole. And once you complete one of these panels, it gets pretty easy, but I had to map it out for myself to begin with. Let me pull the green embroidery floss through, and then I'm going to go back into the hole at the top next to the first hole. And just pull that all through. I like to kind of run it through my fingers so it doesn't get into a knot. So this Christmas card is going to be red, green, and pink. I love using those three colors for my Christmas cards. So next I'm going to skip a set of circles and go into another one up at the top. And then I'll go down to the left. As you can see, I taped it onto the back with just a small piece of tape. And they do have lines etched into them to tell you where exactly they need to go, what hole it needs to go into. So you will see me kind of stop and make sure I'm putting the embroidery floss into the right stitching hole. And then I'll go into the hole next to this hole I just went into. I'll go up. And then go into the hole to the right of the hole at the top. And we'll go down into that. And I'm just going to do the same process all the way across the top of this panel. I don't think there's one right way to do this. You could work your way down or however you'd like. But this just made the most sense to me. And then I can just continue across making X's. I'll speed this up just a little bit for the sake of time. And as you can see, I'm kind of struggling with this long piece of embroidery floss a little bit. But it really helped to map out where my thread needed to go. I'm using three strands of the thread or the embroidery floss. So I just kind of pulled the embroidery floss in half. And then I have the other three strands that I can use next. And this panel looks just beautiful, even without stitching on it. It's so detailed and pretty. So if you don't want to stitch on it and you just want to use it for an ornate background, you could do that too. You could also make faux stitching using some gel pens. I'll have to try that. I think that would just be stunning. But I really love the texture and the wow factor that stitching on card fronts provides. I have one last stitch here up at the top, and then I'm going to skip ahead and show you what the panel looks like with just the green on it. So here it is with the green completed, and now I'm going to start with my pink embroidery floss. And I'm going to do the same thing, except for these X's are a little bit shorter. 
but I'm just making X's across the panel until it's all done. It's easier once you get to the second color. But of course, you could use as many colors as you'd like. So again, I'm going to skip ahead and show you what the completely completed panel looks like. And here it is. I'll just go in my last few stitches here. But isn't that just pretty? And it was really fun to do. I enjoy stitching. It was quite a lot of stitching on this card front. And this is definitely going to be a card I'm going to send someone who I know will keep the card and not just toss it. <laughs> Let's tape this last piece of embroidery floss in place and trim off the end. So I don't want to cover up all of this gorgeous stitching, so I'm going to use a small sentiment on this card. Here's a close-up look at it. I'm going to use a new set of glimmer sentiments, and this is called A Merry Little Christmas Sentiments. These are glimmer plates, and then they have the coordinating die that cuts them out. It also includes sentiments that you can glimmer on the insides of your cards if you'd like. I'm going to glimmer up three sentiments because I don't know which color I want to use. So I'm using a little bit of the peridot green, the pomegranate red, and the pink. This pink is called fruit punch. I press the timer button and once that stops flashing, I'll pull it off the dock and run it through my platinum six. And here they are all done. I'm going to find my magnet tool and pull these off the glimmer plate. And just put it on the silicone mat to cool down for a minute. And then I can gently peel up the yellow tape. And they glimmered up just beautifully. This one says Season's Greetings, and I did that with some gold. This one is Aura, I believe. It's kind of has a gold tone to it, and it says Christmas Blessings. And then the pink one I glimmered up with silver. And it says Happy Holidays. And then I'll use the coordinating dies to cut out these sentiments. Let's go ahead and attach this to a card base. I'm using lots of glue to do this. And then once I have this in place, I do put something heavy on it and allow it to sit for a few minutes. And now for choosing the sentiment. I love them all. I think you couldn't go wrong with any of these. Here is the red one. The red one blended in really well with the rest of the card panel. If you want more of a subtle look, but I'm going to go with the green one that says Season's Greetings and just kind of put it here at the bottom. I'm going to glue it down. I want my Christmas cards to be really easy to mail out this year, and I don't want to have to put any extra postage on them. I'll glue it down in the bottom left corner, and then I have some gold fashion embellishments, and I'll put three of these around the sentiment. I'll put them on the cardstock so they stay put. And then that's all I'm going to do for this card. This one is done. A lot of work and love went into this card, and I just am so happy with how it turned out. Here is a close-up look. So let me know what you think. Is this too much stitching for a Christmas card? Okay, so let's look at the next stitching die, and this one I was so excited about. It is adorable. It's called Stitched Christmas Sweater, and you get this honking big... <laughs> sweater die it's it goes a little bit larger than an a2 sized card but i just love it and i'm going to make it work on an a2 size here it is all cut out with some glacier blue cardstock and the this piece is will cut out the ribbing i cut it out with some purple cardstock then you get all of these pieces that are the stitching pieces so you don't stitch the sweater but you stitch a snowflake, a Christmas tree, and a Christmas bulb. You can make up some really great five by seven inch cards with this die. 
but as I said, I'm going to stick to an A2 sized. I'm adding a little bit of Wilted Violet Distress Oxide ink to the bottom. I wanted to have a little bit more color. And I'm even going to go darker and just fade up to the light blue. I think this looks so pretty. Let's go a little bit darker still. So I'm pushing down really hard at the bottom of the sweater and then just lightening my touch as I blend upward. But the pattern really comes out when you put ink on it. And now let's start stitching the snowflake. And with this set, you could make a bunch of these cards really fast. I'm using some light blue embroidery floss on the snowflake. It kind of matches the top of the sweater. And here it is all done. And then again, I'm just going to tape it in place with just a small amount of the yellow tape. And then I can trim off the end. I always make sure to put my needle on my magnet that's sitting off to the side of my desk so I don't lose it. And once again, I'm going to glue this down flat with a little bit of liquid glue. But first, let's put the ribbing on. I think I'll pull out my tweezers to help me with this. This goes around the neck. And then we'll put the ribbing on the cuffs. And it kind of blends into the wilted violet purple, but that's all right. And last, we can put the ribbing on the bottom of the sweater. And now for the snowflake, I'm putting lots of glue going right over the yellow tape, and then I can just press that into place. I'm going to use a purple gem right in the middle of the snowflake, just one. And let me give you a close-up look at this adorable sweater. For the sentiment for this card, I'm going to use one of the sentiments that I already glimmered. I'll use the pink one. It went really well with the purple card, or the purple sweater. And then I'm going to use a piece of lunar gray cardstock behind it. This is definitely not a traditional Christmas card with these colors, but that's all right. I'll put the gray cardstock on the card base. So this sweater isn't going to fit perfectly within the confines of an A2 sized card, but I am going to kind of put it on a skew. And a little bit of the top of the color hangs off. And then at the bottom, some of the sweater hangs off just a little bit. It will still fit into an A2 sized card. And I didn't want to cut it off. I put dot liner as well as liquid glue just to make sure this heavy piece stays put. And then the sentiment I'll put straight on at the bottom with more liquid glue. And then for a finishing touch, I'll add a few more of the purple gems around the sentiment. And here is a close-up look at the finished card. I think this one is my favorite out of the three that I'm creating today. I don't know, they were all so fun to make and so pretty. On card number three, I'm going to be using the set called Stitched Poinsettia and Holly. This is just a small set, but I love using poinsettias on my Christmas cards, so I had to get this one. And then it has the coordinating dies to cut out all the pieces. But this one's fun because it has the holly berries. Here are all of my dies cut out. I'm going to use a really small piece of the yellow tape to tape the red embroidery floss on the back of this petal. And then these go really fast. I'll show you how I do this. I went up one of the side holes and then I'm going to go down 
the hole at the bottom. This will be the hole that I always pull the thread down into, and then I'll go up in, up through the sides of the petal. So let's go up the next one at the side. And again, I'm drawing the thread between my fingers so it doesn't knot up. And then I'll go down into the common hole. And I'll just continue along like that. If you want, you can glue or cut out two die cuts and glue them together so it's a little more sturdy. I didn't with this card. But I'm just being very careful not to bend the paper. And as you can see, it goes pretty fast. And then you'll have some gorgeous textured poinsettias to go on the fronts of your cards. This would be a set that I would consider making duplicate cards with, just because it does go so fast. And again, if you wanted to use a gel pen to create the faux stitching, you could do that. Here's a close-up look at my first set of petals. So I'm going to glimmer up some more sentiments. I wasn't sure which one I wanted to use. So again, I'm using a Merry Little Christmas sentiment set. And this is one of the larger uh, glimmer plates. I'm glimmering it on paper I want to use on this card. I wasn't sure which color. So again, I'm just glimmering up a bunch on the different colors. Isn't that pretty? It just glimmers up perfectly. Then here is my last one. This is Wild Berry cardstock. The lighter pink cardstock is called Dahlia, and the greenish blue one is called Blue Spruce. And again, I'll cut these out with the coordinating dies. Now let's put this card together. I'm using a panel of the Wild Berry cardstock. This one I cut out using one of the four petal label dies and I embossed it with a Christmas embossing folder. I'll glue this down flat right in the center of the card. And now I can glue down the flower and the leaves. I cut out a few blank leaves just to make it a little more full. Now I can glue down the flower petals. And then one more extra leaf. I cut the center out with some gold mirror cardstock and I'll just glue that in place. And then I can glue down the sentiment. I decided to use the green one. And I'll have links for all of these products listed in the description box if you're interested in checking any of these out. Here's a close up look at card number three. There are more stitching dies that were released, and I'll list those in the description box as well. Stay tuned for more Christmas in July cards using some brand new products from Spellbinders. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video today. Take care. Bye.